Okay, so it's that time of the year again, folks. Here at MMA Dive, we're not content to just voice our opinions. No, we actively make a point of laying our neck down, right in the path of the guillotine's blade, firing our MMA predictions out there in the hopes of maybe nailing one every now and then. So with this brief intro out of the way, here are eight major MMA predictions for the rest of 2022. John Jones decision Stipe Miocic lands at least two takedowns. And for our first prediction, we're flying out the gate faster than John Jones when he hears USADA are in the building. The heavyweight debut of the the long-time light heavyweight champion, looks set to see him take on the former divisional king Stipe Miocic, and it's about that I love on many levels. Obviously it's not set in stone just yet, but if the 205 pound goat does in fact take on the heavyweight goat, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. Packing on the pounds for any divisional leap is going to be a delicate process, but the time that John is taking is definitely giving me faith in his ability to navigate the physicality gap. Miocic will indeed be a tough test, even with that knockout to Nganu on his resume. However, I do think that John Jones is going to show up and prove his greatness in a big way, establishing himself as the weight class's top contender with a performance that showcases his striking, his masterful defense, but also his wrestling to perhaps a greater extent than we expected. Hamza Chimaev KOs Nate Diaz clean in round two. If you haven't seen our video on this matchup between Hamza Chimaev and Nate Diaz, I would urge you to check it out after this one. For me, this fight's very existence is a consequence of two things. Nate has, of course, over the years shown himself to be just about as game as they come and taking this fight could well be the ballsiest thing he has ever done. But this also for me proves just how ruthless the UFC can be when it comes to attempting to hurt a fighter's brand when they have made it very clear that they are leaving. Again, I get into this in more detail in our video. As for the fight itself, uh, yeah, I think Hamza deserves to be a pretty huge favorite here. The stylistic matchup is just so unfavorable for Nate. And I do think that after years upon years of his chin being heralded as one of the very best in the game, he will finally meet his maker in the form of the welterweight weight and sometimes middleweight bores. I'm going to go for a second round KO that sees the Stockton legend finished cleanly for the first time. TJ Dillashaw reclaims bantamweight gold with a late stoppage. I've been just as guilty of sleeping on Aljamain Sterling as the next man, and if you put a gun to my head, I'd have no problem calling Piotr Jan the single greatest bantamweight fighter in the world, even if he was beaten fairly by Aljo last time around. But although this one could well come back to bite me in the ass, I'm going to pick TJ Dillashaw to make his striking advantage the main factor in a title capturing victory against the champion. I just think that Dillashaw has the wrestling and grappling chops to nullify Sterling's best route to defending his championship. And as the fight goes on, TJ's ability to retain his danger levels late will likely see him earn a stoppage by way of TKO in maybe the fourth round. Charles Oliveira finishes Islam Makachev, confronts Habib. Big call coming in next, but my days of picking against Charles Oliveira are through. Even when faced with the overbearing technical mastery of the next in line, Islam Makachev, I think the pure chaos of the champion will be enough to turn the tide. Look, I'm not confident in this prediction, and I do believe that the wild finishing rate of Oliveira is an easier thing to latch onto as a mental image, but I would say I'm leaning 51 to 49 to Charles, based on what we've seen him do and, more importantly, who we have seen him do it against. If he does win, I think he'll make an incredibly respectful but totally unignorable call out of Habib Nurmagomedov, and I expect the eagle to answer. Israel Adesanya decisions Alex Pereira, but gets rocked. On the long, long list of strange or weird fights that we may see in MMA over the coming years, the idea of Israel Adesanya fighting his former kickboxing rival Alex Pereira in a UFC middleweight title fight will no doubt be right up there. We all know the backstory at this point, and after knocking out Sean Strickland in pretty stunning fashion, all of a sudden, we have a rematch on our hands. Or fight number three, depending on how you look at it. And it's a fight that we never really thought we'd get. Of course, I do back Adesanya to make his MMA experience count in a big way, but in contrast to most people who face the middleweight king of late, I actually think think Alex Pereira will have a moment. A big moment. It won't be enough to earn him a win, but I think he rocks Izzy at a certain point. Maybe even drops him. And that's my prediction. Out of Dominic Cruz, Jose Aldo, Conor McGregor and Tony Ferguson, only one will record a victory this year. Four fighters who are in different positions in their career, but what's very strange here is that while Conor McGregor and Tony Ferguson are technically the new generation talents, even if Tony is the oldest out of the four, it's the WEC veterans, Aldo and Cruz, who are riding win streaks. But yeah, this pick is self-explanatory. I think only one of these guys will record a victory this year. Hell, they might not all even fight. In fact, I'd prefer to see Tony take his rest. Four fighters, one victory shared between them. All of them have a pretty huge next fight on their hands, a pivotal fight. One that will almost serve as a real indicator or like a gateway into the next period of their career, for better or for worse. But yeah, I only see one victory coming from it all. Who will it be? Only time will tell. But in my book, this prediction is just about specific enough to count. Kamaru Usman beats Leon Edwards 50-45. 
It will take more than one boring fight to remove all of the good faith our pound for pound king, Kamar Usman, has worked up for himself in recent times, but with the stylistic matchup that Leon Edwards offers, I do think that we're going to get a very slow, very drawn out technical affair. My prediction is more about Kamaru being forced to fight to a more methodical pace this time around, due to Leon's own technical prowess. And though the actual prediction says otherwise, this fight could be a tough one for Usman, but I don't think it will necessarily be an exciting one. I'm backing Kamaru on the cards with a solid but competitive 50-45, in a set of scorecards that maybe don't tell the full story about how tight the fight was round by round. Will this spur the Nigerian nightmare on to a move up to 205 pounds like he says? Perhaps, perhaps not. But for now, let's just see how he handles Leon Edwards. Piotr Jan TKO's Sean O'Malley in round 3, but gets dropped beforehand. I think Sean O'Malley has had one of the strangest UFC careers imaginable. As a pretty big star for the promotion, his injuries, his USADA issues, and now a fight ending eye poke have forced us to wait a lot longer than expected to see just how good this guy is. To make matters even stranger, he has now been set up for a showdown with maybe the best fighter in the entire division, Piotr Jan. Sugar Sean's highest levels of competition so far have been one round with Pedro Munoz, one round with Marlon Vera, and his wins over decent opposition in Hauli and Paiva and Thomas Almeida. And I do think that Sean O'Malley is a lot better than he has shown, but setting him up against someone as masterful as Jan, that is certainly a crazy move on the UFC's part. I think the fight will be a lot more competitive than most expect, at least early on. But in the second half of the fight, I expect Jan to start digging in, ending things with a third round TKO, but not before O'Malley manages to drop, or at the very least, rock his opponent. But what are some of your own personal MMA predictions for the remainder of 2022? Do let us know your opinions in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Thank you for watching.